I hope you know that for many Christians, prayer is last resort. It's when we have tried everything and everything I sell down and say, Oh God, oh God, oh God. No, no, no. God didn't design prayer to be last resort. He designed prayer to be the first and only. So Lord, what would you have me do concerning this circumstance? No wonder scripture says in Hebrews chapter 4, he said, labor to enter into that rest. Ah, I need to close now. Labor to enter into that rest. Listen. When that angel finds a man who is here, the question is, what does the angel check to measure a thousand cubits? It's simple. Is desire. Jesus said, He said, if you keep your life, you will lose it. He said, but if you lose your life, you will find it. That struggle, whether to keep or to lose, is what determines. So God sits down and waits for you to decide how far you want to go with him how much you want to lose because jesus said if it's me that you want if you don't lose your father your mother your brothers your sisters jobs da 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 he said if you are not willing to lose this you are not worthy of me that means god is waiting for people who are worthy of him and the measure of how much what you put on him is what you are willing to lose. Our greatest fear in being immersed in the spirit is we are afraid of loss. And yet, there is a promise of God. The promise is that if you lose it, you will find it. He said, no one has lost father, mother, brother, sister, jobs. No one has lost these things and has not found more in this life and in the life to come. Let, let me give you a simple life example so that you understand. A few days ago, one of my daughters who have technically never known her father came to me and she came with tears in her eyes. She said, Daddy, I think it's time to find who my father is. And this girl's at 28, 29. Now, I know you, you are very emotional. You'll have said to her, Oh, darling. I'm sorry. I'm not responsible for where you are. But you know, God has to help you. Some of you are even very logical. You know, to, to actually sort that part of your conscience is true. We need to go and find your father. The moment she said it, I turned and I said to her, what is father? Is father the man that slept with your mother to give birth to you? Father is Abba, is sustainer. If he has not been here from the day you were born till now, don't come under that demonic oppression that makes you believe that you are anything less than what you ought to be because you don't know what, who your biological father is. I said, so what do you want to say of us? Those of us that God raised to become fathers for you. Did you ever think that God was going to plug you with a man like me? And then she began to say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I just cleaned her eyes. I said, it's a vagabond spirit. And Satan uses the legality of your emotions to make you believe that something is missing. Then you go chasing what is not lost. I said, I said, it will have been your type that is now 29 years later. If I picked you up from when you were six, if it's now you are knowing that I was never your biological father, you will still enter into a quagmire in your mind. I said, it's a devilish spirit. Something told you that if you are not connected to the thing biologically, it is not. The problem is that many Christians who lost fathers to become Christians have found fathers who they have not received as fathers. We lose the sense of the reward that the kingdom gave us for what we lost because of our definitions in our minds. So maybe a woman entered into strong opposition with a husband because of her choice to follow God. 
and then God gives her a faithful friend maybe a faithful male friend who fills in for that thought without the bed yeah the bed on the file and every counsel she should have gotten from a husband the friend gives it every thought she should have gotten from a husband the friend gives it she doesn't remember to thank the Lord who caused her to find her life after she lost it many times Christians don't know in what measure they find their life so we're only conscious of what we have lost so that even if God sends replacements we are not able to identify them so we make losing our life a big deal while Jesus on the cross looked at his mother and said, Woman, behold your son. Then he said, Son, behold your mother. That means everything I would have been to you, John will be, and much more. You gave me to God, but you lost nothing. John, your parents gave you to me. But even at the point of death, I need you to know, you lost nothing. There's nothing we give to God that is actually a sacrifice. God owes no money. I made those final statements so that your mind will shift. So that you realize that everything that your mind is thinking, your heart is calculating, will I lose this thing? Is this how I'm going to live? Am I sure anybody's going to ever? Am I? Not a job, not a house, not family, not. There's nothing you lose to follow him that you don't gain in multiple walls. So saints, in this season of immersion, because when we return in the evening, I will speak about the culture of God's love and the prevailing cultures of the time. Because we need to ward this mindset that is not permitting us let the spirit carry us. Many of us are too heavy for the spirit. Are too heavy. Every time we just think of one problem, it weighs us down. Say, so I need you to go on an assignment for me. And I think who will handle this? Bah! And then you are held down. Every one of us that said yes to God found a way. I mean, we found that a way was prepared for us. Let me let me close by saying this. Jesus in Matthew chapter 10 was sending them out two by two. As he sent them out, he saw them going back, packing post, pass, packing script, packing bag. Oh boy, how long is this mission now? We're not sure. It's one city we need to take. Maybe like two months. Well, give me like that cloth. Give me. Uh, Judas, come. Let's share that money. And Jesus watched the drama. I know you read it in, 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 jo, in Matthew 10. And you just said, okay, go from here two by two. Take no pause. Take no script. That's not how it happened. When you go to heaven, you can confirm. He must have said to them, why are you guys? Go. You go to Capernaum. You go to Capernaum. You go to Decapolis. You go. And then he saw all of them turning. Oh, why? But it gets more change there. That they had to call the boys back. I said, Are you guys all right? I said, Go now. I said, Oh, well, don't you know that if I send you, I will be irresponsible not to provide for you? It's liberty. It sets you free from worry, sets you free from strife, sets you free from overthinking. I live such a free life you won't believe it Jesus said go he said, he said go go means go if you need a purse you will find it there if you need a staff you will find it there if you need an extra tunic you will find it there in fact let me give you how you are going to do it if you walk into a city knock the door of a house and declare be upon you he said if a man of peace is there let your peace rest upon that house then eat whatever i served you what jesus is saying is that the peace you brought is more expensive than what they are feeding you with one day he called them and he said when i sent you 
did you lack anything? What do you lack? Then I found out that the absence of the liberty of letting the rivers of the spirit carry us has given us too much headache. The songwriter said, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry. Yeah. So if your trouble is who will marry me or who will I marry? The problem is, if you arrive at that liberty, then you will know that there's a plan for you. And at this season of your life, oh, I'm talking to somebody about the spirit now, that this season of your life is so that you can set yourself on a course that will cause that if anybody joins you, they will not deter you. Especially for those of you who are ladies, let me give you free advice. Make sure you are set on God's course for your life before anybody meets you. You are easy to deter if your course is not determined. So when God chooses to have mercy upon you, he makes sure that marriage doesn't happen early for you so that you can determine in what direction you are going. So that the man who joins you already meets you doing the will of God for your life. It becomes difficult to deter you from living there. Don't complain about everything. Many things we complain about are the manifestations of the mercy of God. And yet, a troubled heart would not permit us to enter into our inheritance. And sometimes the painful part is that God looks at us and sees how troubled we are. And he says, just give them what they are looking for. And the moment he says that, you have walked out of the mercy of God. You now have to live the rest of your life struggling to fix what you insisted to get. Set yourself free. Every good thing you are looking for is inside God's agenda for you. Set yourself free. The comfort you are looking for is there. The peace you are looking for is there. I woke up yesterday morning and I tapped my wife to pray in the morning and I said to her, hasn't God been merciful enough to us? People plot their way and never become half as successful as we have become, even in the natural. I mean, the things that people count as success. People plot their ways and never arrive at half of the fulfillment and the success we have seen. We lost our lives early. And see, we have no reason to worry today. Take it from me as a recommendation. Permit the river of the spirit to carry you. If he carries you, you will find out that you lack nothing. Amen.